Hi there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're taking a look here at a Nissan SEMA. This one here, a 1992 model with just 60,000 kilometers. This one I bought for a customer at auction. This customer is in the USA, and so this is going to be sent to the USA under the 25 year rule. The Nissan SEMA is Nissan's big body sedan. I guess kind of like a Ford Crown Vic in terms of styling and market position. It would compete against a Toyota Crown or Toyota Celsius. Also Lexus LS 400, I suppose. And uh, maybe similar to the Infiniti Q45, uh, but a different vehicle as it shares probably some things like the engine, for example, and the drivetrain, but styling is very unique. And I got a Land Cruiser coming. And it might be my Land Cruiser. But then again, it might not. We'll see when it gets here. I hope it's not my Land Cruiser, because I got a video to shoot. Oh, looks like it is. See if you can park in there. <laughs> okay, 4.1 liter naturally aspirated engine. Oil and coolant have both been checked and they're both okay. Really no problem with this car mechanically. We close the hood here and turn the engine off. And I might have to sign for that Land Cruiser before this video is done. Now, I'll just, uh, I'll just show you a couple of neat things. Take a look at the steering wheel when you take the key out, watch what happens. It moves itself out of the way because it's power tilt and power telescoping. There's also cruise control. I'll get more to that in just a sec. Let's go back around to the front of the car. And it kind of has Jaguar-like proportions, to be honest. Like the long front end, the short nose, and then the back end here has a rearward sloping trunk. Very Jaguar-like. Bigger seats in the back than in the front. That's kind of cool. It means this is a car that you would get driven around in. Konnichiwa. Okay, so let's have a look over the auction inspection sheet. This is the information given to you before purchasing and what you base your purchase off of. So it's a 1992 SEMA. They call this the Type 3 Limited, which is a little bit funny. I've never actually heard it called the Type 3 Limited. Let's go see if there's a badge, because that definitely sounds like a Jaguar. SEMA V8, it says in the back, and then no badges to call it a Type 3. Let's sign for this now. Not my real signature. And he'll give me the piece of paper, and then I'll put the paper in my pocket. Thank you. Thank you. See, I told you. Okay, let's go over this some more. So this is an auction grade 3.5 with an interior B. 60,257, that's authentic mileage. Automatic transmission with AC, power steering, power windows, airbag, and alloy wheels. Seat is dirty and various scratches and dents. So not very many marks on it. The interior, in fact, is very, very good in this. The exterior, it has a few things. So the front bumper has some scratches on it. Rear bumper has some large scratches on it. There's a large scratch around the wheel fender here. I'll quickly show you because that's right where I'm standing. From here to here including some kind of heavy damage over here and here. Now it's light, it's small, but it's long. Okay, also you can kind of see here, it has hard water stains on it, so you need to polish it, but that'll polish out. There's also A3U2 over here. That's pretty significant body damage, and it would scare me off usually. 60,000 kilometers doesn't scare me off though. So the combination of the two makes a car like this maybe still worth it to bid. I feel like in person this is not as bad as I thought it would be. And I got another video for the customer who bought this showing this from different angles so that you can see it. Okay, now the back, the A3. Now they show A3 on the back. It's here and down there. But also no mention of the A3 here. And here, and here. Now it may have been the, the inspector's intent to kind of say A3 on the back, and then it's the trunk and the bumper together. Here's a view from afar. But that's that. The rear bumper is odd looking to me. It's like, uh, small but still like old school style bumper 
but it's also like really, really long here, but just a small bumper. I don't know, it's kind of like, a, like this marked the pivot between 80s and 90s styling for Nissan, where they went with a, a 90s car, but they weren't on their bumper game yet. Because a lot of more modern, well, there's a Nissan there, a more modern Nissan. The bumper kind of looks like today's bumpers, where it's kind of molded into the styling of the car. Whereas this one is more like 80s, where it's like, we styled the car, and then we put a bumper on it. Oh, and here's the front had the A2 scratches, according to the auction sheet. There's a look at what the front looks like. And I do like the headlight with the fog light directly down from it. I think it's a good look. And back in the day, all of the models had their own mark as well. And so that one there is the schema's mark. It's also on the key. And I think on the wheels, yeah, right there in the center at the wheels, it looks like broccoli. So Nissan broccoli. It also says SEMA here, but you don't get a logo to go along with it. I mean, you get the SEMA logo, but not the broccoli SEMA logo. Yeah. And yep, that's everything there. So uh, once around time, let's do that. And usually I stand right where Land Cruiser is. Huh. This Land Cruiser, here's something fun. The 88 on there means that the same owner has owned it for 20 plus years because they don't use that style anymore. There you go. That's what we do when there's a Land Cruiser in your way. Sometimes in life, a Land Cruiser gets in your way. And when that happens, you point your camera above it by stepping on the sidestep. It's like a metaphor for life. Okay, stock exhaust, stock rear wheel drive. These are the type of cars that started the VIP style of tuning. If you don't know what that is, look it up. VIP or VIP. In Japanese, it's called BIPU, which is how you would pronounce VIP if, it, if you were to read it, like VIP, BIPU, yeah. And so with the VIP styling, they'll put big wheels on it and then body kits that, that lower the side down and make it boxy in the front to give it a very kind of menacing in your face look. And a car like this would be very commonly uh, sought after in the States for being an original JDM car, a vehicle that's not available in the States and one that would suit the VIP style of tuning very well. Especially with the seat covers in here. Now there are some little bits of body damage. I'm not gonna show everything because I kind of got those in the other videos. But uh, if you look down here, I'll show you the side panel so you can see what that looks like. This side had U2 in various places. It's really not as bad as I thought it would be. You also get chrome mirrors, chrome surround around the windshield. These visor things, very common in Japan. Got a dent up here. And reverse sonar in 1992. My car doesn't even have that. My car doesn't have a lot of things though. <laughs> it's only like a, a 2003, I guess. All right, so let's go to the interior. Now, big, big, big rear door. Makes it really easy to get in. You also get power seats in the rear. I wonder if they'll work now. Oh yeah, they do. And so, see that seat? I don't know if you can see it. It's still moving. And that uh, gives you a nice recline to the seat. You get the half seat covers, the lace ones. Now these might look a little bit goofy if it's the first time seeing them, but they're very cool. It's like a very much Japanese only type thing. And a lot of people who buy JDM cars are looking for this Japanese uniqueness. Something like that just wouldn't fly in America's on a brand new car, but here in Japan, very cool. And it's unique enough that it's something that's sought after these days, especially when they're in good condition and have broccoli logos on them. This is, uh, maybe it was Nissan's intent to make kids better at eating. Like, we put broccoli on this, it'll give you a good impression of broccoli, and then you'll eat it. The odd thing is, is Japanese kids love broccoli. It's not your stereotypical bad, bad vegetable. And then this button here, you can move the seat I'm in back into its position if you're in the driver's seat and you want to move it back. Inside here, we get head hone jack. In Japanese, they don't have a F sound. They only have an H sound. The 
H and the F are the same, so this is called headphones. There is also audio control, and this is typed in the type of Japanese for English words or for other language words, so this one actually reads phonetically, audio control, which is audio control. This is air conditioning settings, so that's very cool. You can set your temperature here, because I mean the car's not on, but yeah. Search, volume, mode, power, that's cool. I don't know if you can open that. It says new wool. Wow, wool, real wool interior. High end. You know, all these luxury cars want leather interior. Leather interior is, you know, it's, it's high end, it's good, it smells nice, but it's hot and it's cold and it's noisy. Wool is just a very nice material. But it's scratchy. But you gotta get used to the scratchiness because wool is worth it. It has a cool little light here. You can't see it right now, but there's a light underneath here that illuminates your buttons so that you can see where your power windows are. Classy. Also, speaking of classy, it has... This is a common thing for Nissans, but a very cool thing. Analog clock. Love it. Let's move that out. If we can. Okay, so have a quick look here. Okay, and you get the same half seat covers. The ethical seat covers, I'm going to call them. Or the, the parenting contribution seat covers. And in Japan, they don't like green peppers. Kids don't like green peppers, because the green peppers in Japan are bitter. And, well, disgusting, unless you like bitter foods. The steering wheel is now up out of the way. It's hard to see that. Can you see? There you go. 60,312 kilometers at the time of shooting this. So in the movie um, Inside Out, there's the part where the girl hates the broccoli, and the Japanese one, they changed it to green peppers. And you can release the e-brake here. There's snow and power modes for the automatic transmission. That's a regular center console. The shifting is good. This is nice and tight. It doesn't have any bad smells inside the car. Now, it has been smoked in, if you take a look in here but it doesn't smell of cigarettes, but there is. She got it ban, which is Japanese for cigarette burn, right here. Uh, stock CD slash tape deck for all you old school brothers and sisters, and then a full automatic cruise control here. Press the button and set the temperature. Super easy to use. Okay. I already showed you that. Here's what the dashboard looks like. Very simple. Elegant dashboard. And this does feel like a well-made car. And I find Nissans of this era, they didn't, like, they were good cars mechanically. They didn't feel as well-built as Toyota. But this one, it's on the same level. And so they paid extra attention in this compared to that. About making sure that the car felt like it was high-end or luxury. Doors closing, feel of the seats, electronics, things like that. Okay, so there we have it. Toyota, not Toyota, <laughs> Nissan SEMA. This one here, 4.1 liter V8. That's the end of the story, so thank you very much for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.